Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. This is the Color Collage Fabric Collection by Shelley Davies for Northcott. You can see it's just every single shade of the rainbow and it's really fun to look at. Originally, I intended to use these fabrics to make notebook covers and zipper patches and I had a lot of fun making them. I did every color and then all of a sudden I was seeing, I want to do everything in every color. So I want to make all the pouches and all the notebooks and all the everything. But of course I know that my YouTube viewers like to see the ornaments. So let's begin with this pink angel. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make the pink color collage angel, we'll start with a 20 millimeter face. You can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. It's very easy. And then I have some six inch tool in a pink color and I will take off about 12 or 15 inches fold it in half and now I have two I have a kind of like it's it's a folded over strand of pink um, baker's twine and I'm going to use this to secure the center of the tool this is going to be the hanging loop so there we go it goes through the tool and the needle I'll pull through the head from the bottom to the top and then slide the tool inside the head bead. Then I'll remove the needle and tie this into an overhand knot for the hanger. Cut off that extra. Then I'm gonna secure the tool in the head bead with a little smudge of hot glue. A little smudge of hot glue and then I'll Pull the bead back on to that tool. The tool should fill the center of the bead. So now I'm off to a good start. I've got my hanging loop, my head, my face, and my pink tool. Now I've cut a piece of the pink collage fabric. It's four and a half by 12. So the first thing that I want to do is take my pinking shears and trim the bottom edge with my pinking shears because this does kind of tend to fray and I don't want to have to fold it up and all that, you know, like hem it. <laughs> so I'm going to pink the bottom edge. There we go. And that's the only thing you need the pinking shears for. We're done with the pinking shears. And if you don't want to do that, it's totally optional. Now I'm going to apply this trim. I got this at Hobby Lobby to the bottom edge like this with this um, basting tape. So I'll just kind of set it down right on the right side, the bottom edge like this. And then kind of press that on. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, nothing, practically nothing <laughs> that I ever make has to be perfect. And then you peel off the backing making sure that the sticky uh, substance remains on the fabric. I had to hold it right under my nose to get it started. <laughs> there we go. So you can see that little tape remains there. You can probably see it sort of glistening. And then I'm going to take a length of this trim and press it directly onto the sticky stuff onto the tape. Great, and it seems very secure, but of course I will sew that. I'm gonna use white thread and sew right down the center of the trim. Let's flip it over. I just wanna make sure that it's, oh, kind of, um, like it, it doesn't waver along the bottom. So I'm good to sew right along that white center. That looks good. 
So now I'll fold this in half, pin and stitch up this back seam. Now I'll turn it to the right side and gather up the top. I have a doubled strand of this quilting thread and a thimble, and I'm gonna gather this up just about a quarter of an inch from the top edge all the way around. I'm using a running stitch and I'm just stitching through one layer of the fabric. There we go. Now I'll just pull the angel's uh, face, her head through and pull this tight around her neck. I like to make sure that that seam is in the back. This fabric is so interesting and there's so much going on that I don't really pay much attention to, <laughs> to what exact uh, images or motifs that I have on the front, but this one happens to have the sweetheart right there, which is kind of cute. I'm going to secure my thread in the back. I go through a few times. I make sure that I'm sewing all the way through the tool and then I just secure it in the back. Just stitch through a few times. Then I'm going to trim out this extra tool. And then I have Okay, I have about 12 and a half inches. You can use any amount from about 12 to 15 or 18 inches, whatever you like, of this flat lace. It's about three quarters, yeah, about three quarters of an inch wide, flat white lace. And again, I'm gonna gather that up with my quilting thread. I like to fold under the first end and secure my thread there. Secure the knot in that little fold, and then I just go in and out, in and out, just beneath the header of that lace. Again, with a running stitch, you don't have to have super small stitches. Just go in and out, in and out. There are a few threads raveling there. So I'll trim those out and then I'm gonna add this lace collar around her neck. I'll stitch the ends together in the back. And then I'll stitch through to the front. Make sure I don't get, catch that twine. And then back through, all the way through. This, um, this is just to make sure that I have the even amount of ruffling on either side. If I don't secure in the center, then potentially this could slide around. I'll secure this in the back and tie off the thread. Now for the hair, I'm gonna use my favorite little loopy mohair and I'll wrap this around my fingers five times. One and two and three, and four, and five. Then I'll take this top thread, go all the way around, and then take the original end and use that one to tie the knot right in the center. So I made a figure eight and tied it in the center. I'll do it again. I need two of these. I do like to trim these, but not too close because I don't want to risk the knot coming undone. I'll do it again. Leave a nice long tail and then wrap one and two and three and four and five. And then again, a nice long tail. Go all the way around, hold that, and then use this one to tie it in the center. and then trim. So these two bundles will become her hair. And I'll start with the back. 
So I'm going to apply some hot glue all around the back of the bead. This is a generous amount of glue and I'll set the center of the bundle right behind this hanging loop and then I'll press the loops into the glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. This part will be covered by the wings. So we just want to make sure that it's um, kind of covering the sides and giving a little shape to her hair. Now for the front bundle, I'm going to squeeze some glue right in front of the hanging loop. Now with the front bundle, I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'll place the knot or the center of the bundle directly in front of the hanging loop. And then there's um, two sides. And then I'm going to twist toward the back and glue this to this side, twist toward the back and glue this to this side. This little end of the knot, I'm leaving this here because it looks kind of like bangs and I like it. I think it's cute. So I'll squeeze out some glue right here along the side and then twist toward the back and press this into the glue. That looks good. And then the same thing for this side. I'll apply some glue, twist and press. There's my glue. And then I'll twist and press this side into the glue. That looks good. Great. Awesome. Now let's add her halo. So for her halo, I'm using 20 gauge gold wire. You don't need very much. About <laughs> one and three quarter inches, I guess. That seems right. I use my thimble to give it a shape. I'm gonna sort of make a hairband shape like a U like this. And then I'll apply some glue to each end and I'll press it into her hair like this for her halo. It's kind of like a headband. Now we need a little bit of embellishment. So I'm going to tie a bow from the baker's twine about three inches across. And then I'm going to sort of fold it so the loops are down and add a little glue right here. Just a little drop of glue. And then I'm going to press that into her, just below her chin, into the lace collar. That looks good. I'll cut these even with the hem and then tie an overhand knot in each streamer. They don't have to be even, they don't have to be right at the end, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, I kind of prefer if one's a little higher, I like that. And now if the ends fray, it won't look bad, it'll look kind of cute. Okay, now I have this trim with little flowers that are pink. Hmm, I think we're gonna use this end, so I'll remove this green part for now. I have, let's just say, a whole daisy and a half a daisy. So the whole daisy, the full daisy, I'm going to glue right there on top of the bow. Like that. That looks good. Now, here's the stem. Let's see, okay, this is the right side. Now, I could add the stem there. That does look good. What do you think? Hmm, I think I'm gonna go for it. There we go. That looks good. And now this little half of a daisy, I'm going to I don't know, maybe, I think I'll glue it behind her halo. I'll wait, first I'll do the wings. So this is a double-sided um, micro dot paper and you have a choice. You can make the wings white or pink. I've done both ways. Here's the pink and here's the white. This was the first one I made. I'll show you, I do have a process. 
and I used pink yarn for her hair and I didn't really like that. And then I used this trim and I thought it was too busy, but I do like the white wings. And then this one has the pink wings. It sort of sets off the white, there's white hair and the white collar. And so the pink provides a contrast. So I think I'll do pink. This, I cut this on my die cutting machine. So it's a scalloped circle die. And it is one, two, three, less than four inches. So about 3.75 inches. And I'm gonna fold it in half, let's see, like that. Kind of matching up the scallops. That looks good. And now I'm gonna zigzag stitch around the edge here to hold the sides together. There's my wings. And I'm going to apply some glue right here in the center top, right there. Then I'll press this into the back of her head and I, I kind of eyeball the scallops to make sure that I'm centered. That looks good. And then finally, this little daisy applique. It does look cute in the hair. Yeah, I think I'll put it behind the halo. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here and I'm actually gonna glue it to the hanging loop and the hair. That looks good. There's her bow. And she's done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.